Buenos dias, mis amigos. Revelation 25. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. Revelation 25. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. Revelation 25. Okay, I don't know what the point of this video was, but I, I do. Uh, I just wanted to uh, share it because I want to concentrate on Revelation 20, verse 5. All right, and so this stems uh, from a comment that I got yesterday, 16 hours ago, from Anthony Polunky. And um, he says, uh, first of all, in, in his original comment, he says, While I agree with most your interpretation here, you said at the beginning that there is no 1,000-year reign. The first four or five verses of Revelation 20 beg to differ. They are rather explicit about it being a thing. Some want to argue a metaphorical meaning into it, but those are really inconsistent. Well, I respond by saying the Revelation 20 never makes any mention of a thousand year reign. It doesn't. So he quotes verses 4 through 6, and then he asks, In what way is this not a mention of the thousand year reign? And the rest of the trap, uh, chapter following this, what happens after the thousand years are up is Satan is loosed again and he deceives many and builds a huge army to try to destroy the new Jerusalem. God destroys the armies with fire from heaven and then casts Satan into the lake of fire for eternity. Then immediately following this is the great white throne judgment takes place which immediately following that is the creation of the new heavens and the new earth in Revelation 21 this is unambiguous very explicit mention and promise of the thousand year reign now maybe you want to try to allergize this or something but you definitely cannot say the scripture makes no mention of it. Oh, I definitely can say the scripture makes no mention of a thousand year reign because there is no mention of a thousand year reign in Revelation 20 or anywhere else in the Bible. You even quoted Revelation 20. And it still made no mention of a thousand year reign. It's just simply not here. Okay, what if, if people would just slow down, you know, just think, maybe breathe a little bit and read? They'll see here that they lived and reigned with Christ thousand years it it's not saying oh thousand year reign it doesn't say thousand year reign you got the word reign you got the word thousand and you got the word years but what you don't have is a thousand year reign the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years are finished again it's not there blessed and holy is he that has part in the first service on such the second us shall shall have that the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand. It does not say thousand year reign. Period. And you wonder what word? How can you? It's a, it's unambiguous. It's explicit. Is that the word you use? Really? Explicit. But it's not there. So how do you call it explicit? How do you even call it unambiguous when it's not even there? It's incredible. It's been 
parroted and echoed in your brain and you become brainwashed and you're believing it's there when it's clearly not there at all it's a phenomenon really and it's in my opinion it's it's clearly because people that do not believe the Word of God they are delusional and there's nothing anybody can say or do to change that it's up to the individual whether they want to believe what they read or not and because they don't believe what they read they deserve to be delusional yeah that comes from the Bible too I'm not sure if that have any effect on anybody at all or not but just uh just so that you know there's no in case there's somebody new you know bring this up almost every time Isaiah 66 verse 4 I will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them because when I called none did answer when I spake they did not hear but they did evil before mine eyes and chose in that in which I delighted not so this here this idea of a thousand year reign is not it's not in Revelation 20 All right, you, you failed to even make a, a logical argument here because listen re let's read what you said and he deceives many and builds a huge army Satan and there's no mention of Satan building a, a building anything let alone a, building a huge army to try to destroy the new Jerusalem all right, so this is interesting, okay? Before I before I do anything, let me just go to Revelation 21. All right? And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I John saw the holy city New Jerusalem. Think about that. Coming down, you know, let's do it this way. New Jerusalem. Right there, you see that? New, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. All right. So think about what he's saying here. He builds a huge army to try to destroy the new Jerusalem. Where's the new Jerusalem? It's in heaven. I think about that. Just think about, just think, oh wait a second, just think about that while I'm trying to find this verse here. Galatians 4 verse 26 but Jerusalem which is above is free which is the mother of us all Jerusalem which is above is free Revelation 21 and I John saw the holy city New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven and then our our friend here he says that Satan builds a huge army to try to destroy the new Jerusalem. Well, that new Jerusalem has to be above. Now think about that. Think about that. Are you thinking about it? So when we get to Revelation 20, let me go back. We notice here in verse 5, the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished 
they lived not again until after the thousand years. So where's this idea of a resurrection before the thousand years? It's not there. It's after the thousand years. And what happens after the thousand years? We are lifted up into the air We are lifted up into the air. And what happens? Our enemy is gathered at our feet. Gathered at our feet. Think about it for a second. Alright, are you thinking about it? Alright, so... We are lifted up into the air after the thousand years. Our enemy is gathered at our feet. Is this supported by the Bible anywhere? Well, let's see. Genesis 3 verse 15. The Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. The Lord is up. The serpent is on the ground. God stomps his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying all evil forever. All right, yep. is that enough? Is that not enough? I guess maybe I should be asking. Psalm 110. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. What's that mean? That, well, that means God is above, enemy is at our feet. So what happens at the end of the thousand years? We are up above and our enemy is at our feet. Alright, let's go to Acts chapter 2. Until I make thy foes thy footstool. Again, our enemy is at our feet. Let's go to Revelation chapter 3. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Where are we at? We're above. Our enemy is at our feet. Alright, 1 Corinthians 15. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. So at the end of the thousand years, we're above. And our enemy is at our feet. Alright, let's go back to the comment here. He's claiming Satan will build a huge army to try to destroy the New Jerusalem. Well, the New Jerusalem can only be above. Alright, that's the only place it could be. So, at the end of the thousand years, we are lifted up into the air, just like the rest of the Bible says. Just like what's consistent all, all throughout the Bible in Matthew 24 Mark 13 Luke 21 when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we are lifted up we are gathered together up in the air right just like what we read in 1st Thessalonians 4 first the dead in Christ shall rise then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we're up in the air. Our enemy is at our feet. Right? It's, an, it's incredible, isn't it? It's incredibly consistent all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. 
All right, First Corinthians 15. Um, again, Christ is the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at His coming. All right, think about that. We are resurrected at His coming, which would has to be at the end of the thousand years. It has to be. There's no other possibility. All right, let's go to Second Peter chapter three. The Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens. Here, let's go. Let me read it before I butcher it. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. This is consistent with everything that we read in the Bible, right? The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The elements shall melt with fervent heat. Think about that. Matthew 24, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Revelation 20, and fire come down from God out of heaven and devoured them. We're up above. Our enemy is at our feet. And fire comes down from heaven, from God out of heaven, and devours them all. In Matthew 13, we read about the parable of the wheat and the tares. The parable of the wheat and the tares. The harvest is the end of the world. And the tares are gathered in bundles and they are burned. The wheat are gathered into my barn, which is above. My barn is my city. Think about John 14, when Jesus says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Right? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So this is consistent all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation that when Jesus comes it's the end of the world and we are resurrected. Consistent all throughout. Alright so back to Revelation 20. The rest of the dead lived not again. So they didn't live again until after the thousand years. Therefore it can only be at the end of the world. Right? First Corinthians 15. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. See, we were resurrected at his coming. It's consistent everywhere that we read. So in Revelation 20, when it says the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years are finished, this can only mean that the thousand after the thousand years we are resurrected. Right? Now this says here, this is the first resurrection. Well, how, how can they be resurrected? But they lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Well, there's only one possible explanation. And that is that Jesus is the resurrection. Well... Does Jesus ever say anything to suggest that he is the resurrection? <laughs> is that a dumb question or what? Jesus said unto her in John chapter 11, 
I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Compare that with what we read in Revelation 20. All right. Jesus says, I am the resurrection. In Revelation 20, this is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. See, we are partakers of his resurrection resurrection he is the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me though we were dead yet shall he live and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die the second death has no power over those of us that are born of God those of us that live and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ the second death has no power over us right now Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. We are partakers of his resurrection. We are not the first resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15 says, Hey, now Christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive, but every man in his own order. Christ the firstfruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. There's only one possibility. And that is the resurrection occurs when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. There is no other possibility. And that's the resurrection that we read about in in uh, Revelation 20. All right, in Revelation 20, the resurrection, the first resurrection is Jesus, and then at the end of the thousand years is our resurrection. We are partakers of His resurrection. We are not resurrected without Him. He has led the way for us. He has promised to return for us, and when He returns he will gather us together to be with him all right and so when this happens it's the end of the world and we are up in the air and when fire comes down from God out of heaven we're up in the air we you don't want to be down on the earth if you're painting a scenario where you're down on the earth when this happens you're on the wrong side of the fence, partner. The wrong side. Because right, we are up in the air when fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours. All right. <clears throat> Think about Revelation 3. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. All right. So Revelation 20. Uh, it says here that they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Let's go to Revelation chapter 1. And speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. Right now we are kings and priests unto God. And they shall be priests of God. And you go to Exodus 19. Exodus 19 the Lord says you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests right? you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation these are the words which thou shalt speak to the children of Israel first Peter chapter 2 we are a royal priesthood excuse me where's, where's that at we are a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people right we are a kingdom of priests a peculiar treasure unto me above all people right so in Revelation 20 we read about we are priests of God and of Christ right now right now we reign with him and you notice here in Revelation 20 with Christ with him it's not saying that Christ reigns a thousand years it's not saying we reign a thousand years 
It's saying during this thousand year period, we reign with him. What's so unique about this thousand year period? Well, this is the time in which Jesus has come and ascended to heaven and promised to return for us. All right, so this period from his promise to his return is the thousand years. No question about it. There is no other possibility. There is no wiggle room. You either got it right or you got it wrong. And it's, it's pretty phenomenal to see everybody getting it wrong. And to me, it's a clear indication that the whole world right now is full of deceivers. All right, this really is what separates the believer from the deceiver. Either you believe Jesus is going to return and it's the end of this world or you are a deceiver and a liar because you're putting, I mean look, think about it, you're putting your hope into this world you think there's going to be a thousand year extension of this world? This world is dirty, filthy, corrupt. It's wicked and it's coming to an end. What are you putting your hope into? Are you putting your hope into a bonus thousand years? Huh? Is that what you're... Because I'm telling you, you got it all wrong. And this is not just a simple error. This is an indication that you don't have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and the kingdom to come. You're putting your faith into a bonus thousand years. Why? You can take that thousand years and throw it in the garbage can, buddy, because I want no part of it. Hebrews 11, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. What are you putting your hope into? I'm putting my hope into everlasting life. Why are you putting your hope into a bonus thousand years that's not even supported by the Bible? You're imagining stuff. It's not there. It's not there at all. Okay. All right, I, I think I've rambled on long enough, man, but well, it's, it's so obvious, it's incredible to me, but I, I just I firmly believe it's a, it's a phenomenon that God has made because people do not believe the written word of God. They don't believe it, and so therefore, they deserve to be delusional. They deserve to believe a lie. And the whole world's full of people that believe a lie. Even as I show it to you as plain as day, I mean, as clear as all can be, there is no mention of a thousand year reign in Revelation 20, and the idea is not supported anywhere else in the Bible either. It's just simply not there. And to think about it. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't know why it's so difficult to think. But why? Why are you putting your hope into a thousand years? And set aside the fact that it's not going to happen. Just put that aside for now. Why? Are you, why are you putting your hope? your faith into this idea that there's going to be a bonus thousand years of death and sex and all kinds of wickedness alright now look I get it you're going to claim it's a thousand years of peace what there is no sin if there's no sin there's no death so for a thousand years it's going to be no sin, no death. Is that what you believe? For a thousand years. And then God's going to destroy it all. Is that what you're putting your hope into? I'm telling
telling you guys, you're on the wrong side of the fence.